Hello everyone, welcome back. Now moving on towards the next part in the series of diseases of dental pulp that is chronic hyperplastic pulpitis. Now as the name says chronic hyperplastic pulpitis. Chronic is basically when the pulpitis it is present from a very long time. Hyperplastic is nothing but it is the increase in the number of cells. Hypertrophy is when there is increase in the size and hyperplastic is when there is increase in the number of cells. Pulpitis is nothing but your inflammation of pulp. Now this chronic hyperplastic pulpitis, it is a type of irreversible pulpitis. Now in the last video, we have seen about the irreversible pulpitis. So now this chronic hyperplastic pulpitis is nothing but a type of it. So now what is the definition of chronic hyperplastic pulpitis? So this chronic hyperplastic pulpitis, it is also called as pulper hyperplasia or it is commonly called as pulp polyp. So polyp is nothing but an abnormal tissue growth. So when your pulp, it grows abnormally. So that means it is a pulp polyp and it is a productive pulpal inflammation. Productive is a growing type of inflammation. So in this now over here, you can see in this picture, the pulp it grows. So in this inflammation, the pulp it grows abnormally. And why it is growing? It is due to the extensive carious exposure of the young pulp. So this pulp polyp, it is usually found in young pulp. And why? Because the because now over here, now as I said, it is a type of irreversible pulpitis. So now irreversible pulpitis, if it is not treated, so it can turn into this chronic hyperplastic pulpitis. So now this chronic hyperplastic pulpitis is nothing but it is a protective response of the body to that inflammation which is present in the form of irreversible pulpitis. So what your body will do is your body will start producing more cells so as to like fight against that inflammation now we know the neck like, mechanism of inflammation so in that case what will happen is your pulp it will grow abnormally and that will result in the hyperplastic changes so your body is doing that protective response against that irreversible pulpitis and it will lead to that hyperplastic changes that is your pulp polyp so now in this this disorder it is characterized by development of granulation tissue granulation tissue is nothing but when connective tissue and blood vessels are formed so new connective tissue and blood vessels are formed on the surface of your wood so that is nothing but your granulation tissue so in this chronic hyperplastic pulpitis or pulp polyp you will see that there will be granulation tissue and it is at times covered with epithelium so the epithelium which is covering this is the stratified squamous cell epithelium and this Pulp polyp, it is resulting from a long-standing low-grade irritation. So because of that only it is known as chronic because the inflammation or irritation which is present is from a very long time. So this is the definition for your pulp polyp. Now what is the etiology behind this pulp polyp? So it is normally caused by the slow and progressive carious exposure of the pulp. And in this now as a definition only we have seen that it is because of the extensive carious like exposure. So in this the main like etiological factor for your pulp polyp is the carious exposure. But now in this it is a like it is a type of carious exposure which is present from a very long time. So now in this the next etiological factor is for the development of pulp polyp a large open cavity a young resistant pulp and a chronic low grade stimuli are necessary so in this now if the person is having irreversible pulpitis so that will lead to the formation of this chronic irreversible pulpitis so in this the criteria for the formation of this pulp polyp is the cavity it should be a large one it should be an open type of cavity and the pulp is a young type of pulp and it is caused because of low grade stimuli so when the irritation is present from a very long time so that will lead to the presence of this pulp polyp the next etiological factor can be mechanical irritation from chewing and bacterial infection so these are the like various etiological factor the most common like etiological factor is your carious exposure of the young pulp which is present from a very long time now what are the signs and symptoms of pulp polyp now in this pain is usually absent why because 
of the low activity of the exudative forces now over here now we have already seen about it that there is this growth of your pulp so because of that pain is usually absent except when the patient is masticating so at that time the forces will be applied so that time only the patient will feel that pain because of the discomfort but usually the patients they are asymptomatic in this the hyperplastic form of the chronic pulpitis it is seen usually in the young pulp as i said they are usually seen in children and adolescent and now over here the nerve fibers they are very less so because of that they are non painful but now in this now as i said like we have already seen in the definition that there is formation of the granulation tissue so now in this the blood vessels they are formed like in a numerous number so because of that it will bleed easily so in this the pulp polyp is like not painful but it bleeds easily because of the rich network of the blood vessels so now what you will see histopathologically so histopathologically you will see that there is formation of the sclerotic and the irritation dentin now we exactly know what this sclerotic and irritation dentin is as as we have already seen in the first year so sclerotic dentin is basically it is like formed because of the presence of some irritation that is irritating stimuli that can be caries so your sclerotic dentin is nothing but it is a response to that irritating stimuli which is present so what happens in the sclerotic dentin is there will be deposition of the epitide crystal and collagen in the dentinal tubules and because of that there is obliteration of the dentinal tubules and that will lead to the dense mineralization of the tissue so that is nothing but your sclerotic and the irritation dentin so in this now as it is present from a very long time this pulp polyp is present from a very long time so because of that there is formation of this sclerotic dentin as a response to that irritating stimuli that is your caries now in this initially you will see that there is minimal amount of vasodilation so vasodilation is nothing but the widening of your blood vessels which leads to the increased blood flow so initially the blood flow is less there is minimal amount of vasodilation and infiltration of cell so initially when the lesion it starts so there will be less number of cells but when the pulp it gets more and more involved so the vasodilation and the cellular infiltration it starts increasing and there will be more and more number of blood vessels and like connective tissue which is formed and in this the surface of the pulp polyp it is usually covered by this stratified squamous epithelium so we have already seen the definition that it is sometimes covered with the epithelium so the epithelium is the stratified squamous so stratified squamous is nothing but when the cells they are arranged in layers so when the squamous cell they are arranged in layers they are known as the stratified squamous epithelium and they may be derived from gingiva the squamated epithelial cells of mucosa and tongue so the epithelium so it is like having or it is covered by this stratified squamous epithelium initially vasodilation and infiltration is minimal but as it starts like so the lesion it starts going more deeper so that time the vasodilation and the infiltration it increases and there will be formation of the sclerotic and the irritation dentin so this is the histopathology of your pulp polyp so now how are you going to diagnose the pulp polyp so now in the like signs and symptoms we have already seen that the pain is usually absent so that won't be like the diagnostic factor but now in this you will see that the patient will have this like red reddish or that fleshy pulpal mass because in this it is a pulp polyp in which your pulp it grows abnormally so you will see this pulp polyp and it will be like a fleshy reddish pulpal mass which fills most of the pulp chamber or the cavity and it is less sensitive than the normal pulp so it is less sensitive why because there are less number of like nerve fibers but it will bleed easily because there is there are more number of blood vessels so the cutting of this tissue it produces no pain but pressure there by transmitted to the apical end of the pulp that causes pain so when you are cutting so when whenever you are treating this pulp polyp so what you need to do is you first you need to cut out this like pulp polyp that abnormal mass which has grown so when you are cutting this the patient they won't feel that pain but it will create the pressure at the apical end that will lead to the like pain so when the patient in pulp polyp says that i am having pain when you are treating them so it is not because of this pulp polyp but because of the pressure that is applied at the apical end of the pulp 
Now, radiographically, you will see like this. Now, over here, pulp polyp is a soft tissue. So, you won't see anything on the like radiograph. Only the thing you will see is there will be like this large open cavity. You won't see that mass because it is a soft tissue and we cannot see soft tissue in x-rays. In this normal x-rays. So, in this, you will see large open cavity with direct access to the pulp. So, over here now you'll see. So, there is this large cavity which is having the direct access to the pulp and it will turn into periodontitis when it is a long-standing case. Now, in the young patient, low-grade, low-standing, long-standing irritation, it stimulates the periapical bone deposition. So, in young patients, so now as we have already seen the definition, it is a long-standing irritation. So, that can lead to the like bone deposition. So, the thing that you will see radiographically can be the condensing osteitis. So, that will be present sometimes in some patients. And uh, the next diagnostic uh, like factor is the vitality test. So, the tooth, it may respond feebly, like it is not or very less. It is responding to the thermal test unless one uses extreme cold. The next is more than normal current is required when you are using a electric pulp tester because now in this, now we have already seen the pain is not present. Pain is usually absent because of less number of nerve fibers. So, because of that, you need to increase the like current, amount of current to get that response by the electric pulp tester. So, these are the various diagnostic tests for your pulp polyp. Now, what is the differential diagnosis for pulp polyp? So, you have to see that you are not confusing pulp polyp with the gingival tissue growth. So, in this, what you can do is you can raise and you can like trace the stock of this tissue growth to its origin and then pulp polyp you'll see that the origin is the pulp chamber because now it is a pulp polyp and it is not the gingival growth so in this you have to just see about it that you're not confusing it with the gingival growth now what is the treatment so treatment as i said you have to remove that like pulp polyp so that abnormal growth of the pulp and then you have to do the extirpation of the pulp that is your root canal treatment and if the tooth is non restorable one because now there are cases like the patient they don't come only to the dentist because it is asymptomatic so it turns into a non restorable type of like tooth so because of that what you need to do is you just need to extract that tooth but if it is restorable one so you have to just cut down that pulp with a periodontal curate or spoon excavator and then you have to do your root canal treatment. So this is the treatment modality for your pulp polyp. So that was all about the chronic hyperplastic pulpitis or which is commonly known as pulp polyp. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like, comment, share and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.